Spooky month goes on. And so I'm gonna earn the platinum trophy in a quiet place, the video game. In order to platinum, I'm gonna have to beat the game on the hardest difficulty, which is already very interesting. And not only that, but I'll have to speedrun each of the levels throughout the game, clearing certain sections while staying under a set time. This is also very interesting because all of these trophies are skill-oriented, which is very rare to see these days as far as trophy lists go. Resources are scarce and must be preserved and used with intelligence. Don't waste anything. The sounds you make are very dangerous and can bring your death very easily. Alright, well... We're playing on hard, baby. We start the game by being introduced to the protagonist, who suffers from asthma attacks, aka uncontrollable coughing fits. And this is honestly a great idea for a quiet place setting. And it's undoubtedly gonna make things so much more interesting. Basically, if you haven't seen the movies, the creatures that hunt you are completely blind. They operate purely based on sound. And when your character is trying to hide and then suddenly has the urge to cough... Oh shit, was I aiming for the, the, the white ring in the middle? It's honestly such a simple yet brilliant idea. And I think I'm gonna love this. Knowing what I know about the films, it was important that I learned how to perform all my actions quietly. Open doors slowly to avoid unnecessary noises. Oh my... Is even that squeak too loud? Yes! Oh, there was glass here? Oh my god. Making too much damn noise. Well, if this wasn't a tutorial, I feel like I would have died like six times already. Oh, and I haven't even gotten to the best part. What you're seeing now is maximum movement speed. This is the fastest you can move in this game. So yeah, this should make for a very interesting experience. After earning a trophy for completing the prologue, I can now start earning trophies for locating collectibles. And yes, this game has several collectible-related trophies. We'll never be free from them, Chad. I would try my best not to miss any of them. Although thankfully, this game does have chapter select. So if I do miss a collectible, it's not the end of the world. Praise be to Yevon. Whatever, GG easy. I've seen the movies. I know that all I gotta do is not make noise and it's GG. I'm guessing these little trails on the floor here are to indicate, hey, follow this path, dickhead, because I think if I walk on this shit... Yeah, that makes noise. The pressure's on... I just... Motherfucker! I would earn a couple more trophies for finding collectibles, and then another for finishing this level. Okay, and then there was the picture of mom, and then there was that... Uh... Bleh. Dude, fuck being careful. I'm in a safe haven. Like, just... For my first miscellaneous trophy, I would have to light six candles within the chapel inside the hospital. Easy peasy. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. And despite fulfilling the requirements perfectly, the trophy didn't pop. What the fuck? <laughs> huh? So either the trophy's just glitched, or it's a little dodgy at the moment. Ultimately, I decided to revisit this trophy later. Something that I was very impressed by was how good the writing was in this game. Specifically with the dialogue. I found some of these documents to be very captivating. Shortly after, and not much to my surprise, the safe haven becomes compromised. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't expecting something like this to go down. But when I saw how this happened, I just cringed out of existence. Here you have a community that follows all of these strict rules in order to survive, and they're obviously very experienced with the Death Angels, aka the monsters that hunt you. And yet, Dick Smack over here is stupid enough to do something like this. What a fucking idiot. I kept saying the writing in this game was good, but apparently that's only exclusive to the dialogue because that writing was not great. He would know better than to do something that stupid. So now the death angels are roaming around and I can officially be killed for making too much noise. Hmm? Uh-uh. Thankfully I had this nifty device 
that actually would provide me with some crucial information. So to put things into layman's terms, if the bar on the right of the device ever goes higher than the bar on the left, then that means whatever action you performed was too loud and the death angels heard it. Do this too many times and you'll end up like this guy. What's going down? What's this guy up to? <laughs> well, GG. <laughs> Step on some glass is GG. Dude, what? I can't even open this door without the sound of it. Oh, you can open doors silently. You just gotta be turbo giga slow. <gasps> oh god, I didn't see that can there, chat. Oh no! Oh, I'm being a bit noisy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't the best at being quiet. And this made hunting for the collectibles somewhat challenging. Well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't been playing long enough to... Well, I think this is it, boys. Good night. It just sucks, because, like, walking on all this debris is what caused it, but my fucking collectibles over there, which was the whole reason why I even came over here. Bro, how do I get these collectibles without eating shit? What the hell? Putting a collectible on the other side of noisemakers? That, that's so fucking evil, dude. So far, extremely impressed with how well this game captures the feeling of the movies. Which is exactly the same thing that I praised Alien Isolation for. I couldn't help but become extremely curious. I wanted to test the limits of the Death Angel, to find out what exactly he was capable of on a fundamental level. I know they can't access safe rooms, but can they literally show up anywhere at any time? Alright, I'm gonna make some noise. What's going on, dude? Look at me, I'm making noise. Okay. Where's he coming from? Okay, that is exactly what I was so curious about. If you just make too much noise, you just die. You just get put into a death animation. Even though it made no sense for the thing to get in the room from behind me. How the fuck was that too much noise, bro? Oh my god. See, now I know it's just a ploy. Even though I heard the thing, it sounded like it was just outside the room. But I know. It's not actually there. The audio is just trying to make you afraid. When you have an understanding of how the game is working, it almost allows you to fear it less. Now that I was far more experienced with how the AI operates, I actually gained a certain level of confidence, and a lot of my intimidation began to disappear. Hell, I was starting to get downright cocky. Don't make a sound and find a way out. Easy! I don't need my fucking noise meter, bro. I just need to see where I'm going. Zero threat level, by the way. Ah, oh, fuck you. Why are you coming this way? Turn around, dickhead. Dude, there's no way over this water without crossing the water. You're getting a bit- Respect my personal space! <laughs> Back up, Sonny Jim! Yeah, that's right. Boundaries, motherfucker! Clenching! I'll be fine. I know he heard me, but it, it's fine. Oh, I hear him trailing up behind me. Okay, that was the last collectible in the level. I'm going now. Goodbye. He's done it. He's done it! With my newfound confidence, I was able to successfully finish the level, earning me another trophy. My only complaint so far is just how demanding it is to keep your noise levels down. It's kind of crazy how easy it is to make too much noise. Like, 
the fact that if I'm just moving at full speed with like walking, that can sometimes just be too loud. Even though I'm not walking over glass or in a puddle of water, I'm just walking on the, the regular fucking ground. And that can be too loud. Like, that's annoying because it's basically the game saying, hey, dickhead, you got to be playing slower. And it's like, well, I don't want to play that slow. Like, I understand being careful, but do I really have to, like, take itty bitty baby steps literally everywhere I go? Like, that's some bullshit. Also, fuck, I'm walking on like, oh, no. Oh, who put that there? Oh, my... Oh, no. <laughs> but I do love that about this game where... Oh, shit, I triggered the enemy. I fucked up. And then you panic and walk into some shit you can't... You don't see. Like, that shit is hilarious. It's so funny how one mistake can turn into, like, just an absolute escalation. Eventually, I made my way to my first opportunity for a speedrun trophy to get through this part of the forest in under one minute and 45 seconds. Bro, this encounter just started. You better piss off. Okay. I actually managed to do this one without even trying. Although it's not even funny how much harder some of the other speedrun trophies were going to get. What the f- <laughs> Are you kidding me? That was one of the speedrun trophies? That was simple. <gasps> the next miscellaneous trophy required me to find a bottle and throw it at four of the animal statues that could be found in the garden area. Bam. And since there was only one bottle for each statue, finding them took some doing. Especially because you have to dance around a death angel the entire time you're trying to do this. Whoa. Still, I managed to do this on my first try. Yay. And not long after that, I earned another trophy for finishing the level. Now in this level, I would have to solve a puzzle in order to open this briefcase. And once I did, I would earn two trophies. One for opening the briefcase, and the other for opening the briefcase. I'm not joking either. There were no enemies in this level, just a ton of collectibles. One of which earned me another trophy. And shortly after, that was pretty much the level, so cue another trophy. In the next level, I would be reunited with Daddy the Father, and he would do his best to help me navigate through the woods. I go forward. I'll reach a wooden signpost. When you do, go left. But Dad, what if there's collectibles on the right path? Yeah, fuck you, Dad. I'm going right. Did you go left? No. Never did like being told what to do. You can write that on my tombstone, Dad. <laughs> Wait, there's fucking nothing here, dude! Next up, I had to learn how to deactivate traps on the fly. And that went about as well as you would expect. No! no! Please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Continuing on, I gotta hand it to the game. Because it managed to pull one over on your boy. <gasps> Oh, I didn't know that was there until it was too Die. late. <laughs> That's bullshit! Yo, what the fuck? Yo, that was devious! After getting humbled, I would earn a trophy for successfully fighting off an asthma attack. Aw, oh, dude, you got asthma? That's a fucking skill issue, bro. Mmm! <laughs> When I get asthma, I put that shit in its place! Finish the level, blah blah trophy, and now I would be introduced to the sandbag mechanic. Basically, you could make trails of sand as you walk, and because it's sand, it's super quiet. So you could turn what would otherwise be noisy terrain, like puddles or dry leaves, silent by pouring sand over it. Love the idea, super cool concept, although there's a stupid as fuck trophy in this game to completely empty 20 sandbags. This is an absurd number, because you don't need to empty nearly that many bags in order to finish the game. And I guarantee most people that beat this game wouldn't even come close to this number. So that being said, I had to spend far more time than I wanted to pouring sand everywhere. And it was just as exciting and time consuming as it sounds. Hey look, another sandbag, yay! This sucks. 
Another miscellaneous trophy was to frighten every single flock of birds that could be found within the chapter. All of them are pretty easy to find, except for one extremely well-hidden flock. These cheeky little bastards were actually sitting just outside of bounds. So if you never end up looking over here or you run out of shit to throw, then you're SOL. Not to mention I almost can't even see the fucking things. They're almost invisible. There's a bird right there. Fucking bitch! Oh shit, there we go. You got the trophy for scaring all the birds, nice. Anyways, now that I can find sandbags everywhere, I exploited the shit out of them and finished the level pretty effortlessly. The next trophy I could earn was for completing the chase level without dying, and I did this first try. Although the same can't be said for Robert, because Martin missed his skill check and got him obliterated. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, we got a trophy, so it's not all bad. Next up was the pump station, and this level introduced the flare item. There's a trophy to use 15 of these, so every time I found one, I would just activate it and toss it. Although, hilariously enough, this almost got me killed. That was terrifying. Besides that one little hiccup, I finished the level without issue. In the next level, I finally found enough sandbags to bag the related trophy. And then I would have to finesse my way around another Death Angel. Nothing too surprising about that. But what I didn't see coming was my stupendous fuck up. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. My damn asthma. Stop! Coughing, bitch! Oh shit! <laughs> Damn it! I was kind of hoping the bottle sound would overtake my coughing, but then she just kept coughing. Further into the level, I earned a trophy for opening all of the briefcases throughout the game. Code breaker! Oh damn! damn, damn. And then I found this document that I felt like some of you guys might appreciate. So this is it. And why? Because when there's a national crisis, people panic and go to the grocery store, end of the world, monsters killing people in the street, and a whole mob gets the bright idea to rush into my GD store and start fighting over toilet paper. Toilet paper! <laughs> Punching each other, yelling at each other. I try to stop them, I try to keep the peace, but it's too late. Those things are already here, and I paid the price. I hate customer service. <laughs> Holy shit, wait, but real life customer service ain't that different, bro. I felt like the monsters didn't even have to show up, and that story still could have been true. Next up was a trophy for inputting the correct passcode for this lock on the first try. How could you make this game hard, in your opinion? Uh, well, first of all, way too many resources are thrown at you. They're practically shoved in your face. You could easily dial that back. But the funny thing is, is that you don't even need them. I'm literally only using resources in this game because I have to for trophies. If the trophies didn't exist, I wouldn't even be using them. If you ever have an asthma attack, you could just skill check to make it go away. So you don't need inhalers. The game's not dark enough to need flashlights, so you don't need batteries. The fucking resources are practically useless. Same with the flares. Bottles and bricks are useful. They're the only useful thing. Because the, it's just a get out of jail free card. This would have been way more interesting. Make hard mode? No resources. Just take them all out. That would have made things super interesting. Because I still think the game is fully doable without them. And if they weren't, and if they weren't there, holy fuck, that would be like, yeah. Then you'd be stressed. What if they took out the device you have to detect sound? What's fucking hilarious is even that, you could still get through the game without that too. Because again, there's always an audio cue when, you're, when your volume spikes. You get the dong. Yeah, that. <laughs> like that, that, that's enough information. You don't need more than that. Just know, hey, dickhead, you're being too loud. In the next encounter, the game would introduce a brand new mechanic to throw an object at a TV 
while the Death Angel is standing close to it. And if this happens, he will get stunned, and then shortly after, destroy the TV. So we just have to make him do this three times, and then we get a trophy. He stunned himself? I didn't trigger that one. <laughs> what a fucking idiot. <laughs> And while attempting to make this happen, I'd managed to throw my 25th bottle for yet another trophy. It wasn't long before I've made it to the final level of the game. And searching for collectibles without using a guide was proving to be its own challenge. Oh, you didn't miss anything outside. Look at that. What's that then, huh? Bam. I got that gamer intuition, bro. Years of experience. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that timing. Speaking of challenges, the last level in the game was noticeably more difficult to progress through, and I died a lot. Oh, this shit takes a second fuse. Where's my other fuse? Oh, I left it in the fucking box over there like a dipshit. Fuck. <gasps> oh, GG. Ah, oh, see you get me in here, asshole. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Doors are like paper to them! Oh, am I- FUCK! <laughs> Can you get me on this plank, bro? Can you get me on this pl- <laughs> The plank broke! I scooped up the last of the mixtape collectibles for a trophy. And closing in on the end of the game, I decided to try my hand at another speedrun trophy. And this was definitely a wake-up call for me. Some of the speedrun trophies were genuinely tricky, and it was pretty difficult to be fast while avoiding death at the same time. Fuck! Through trial and error, I was able to improve each attempt, until I eventually got it down. And with that, I finished the game on hard difficulty, which would pop all of the difficulty-related trophies at the end. Although before taking on any more speedruns, I wanted to scoop up a few trophies real quick. Starting with revisiting the candle trophy that seemingly glitched on me the first time. Thankfully this time, it didn't. I don't know what the issue was before. I went ahead and used my 15th flare. Oh, I was one off. Okay, cool as well as my 30th inhaler for a couple more trophies. Oh, I was one off from inhale as well? Wow. What are the odds of that? Beautiful, baby. With those trophies out of the way, I was finally ready to take on the rest of the speedrun trophies. Now these can be earned on any difficulty, but I wanted to earn all of them while playing on hard because I wanted them to be more of a challenge. The next speedrun trophy I attempted was for the garden. And I had no idea what hell I just stepped into. Um. Listen. Wh hey, what's over that? That was supposed to go through the window. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. It's it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't don't worry about that. It's fine. So hilariously enough, I'm pretty sure I had it there. But I went ahead and quit out thinking that I didn't get it, when in reality all I had to do was walk further up the path a few more steps, and the trophy probably would have popped. So now I present to you but a taste of the fuckery that I had to put up with while attempting this trophy. Do you have to be right there? Like... Well, fuck you, bro! Okay, now that I know... Do that. Oh, what? This is cheeky, what I'm about to do. Ooh! Wait, that was a massive time save. Oh, that's GG. There's no way I didn't do it this time. Oh, sh- What? What happened? Bro, I- What? I, like, stepped on a pine cone or something! What? I wasn't actually stepping on a pine cone, but I had no other way of describing the sound. The strange thing is that I'm not walking over noise-making terrain, so I know that wasn't the reason. And what's really weird is that this audio would trigger at the most random times. 
making it almost impossible to figure out what was causing this and why it was happening. I've taken this path without having that happen like three, four times now. Can that audio just randomly trigger if you're moving top speed? What is causing that to happen? The thing is, whenever I would trigger the pinecone audio, this would always result in a chase from the Death Angel, 100% of the time. And if he's chasing you, there is no way to get out of chase. They physically will not let you progress if this happens. You can't interact with doors or climb shit. If this happens, then you simply must wait for death. Oh, you know what? Fuck you. I don't give a shit. There's no way he gets me before I win. They stop you from interacting with shit when he's chasing you. No shot, bro. Hey, look, I didn't step on a pine cone this time. Curious. Okay, what fucked me last time was trying to cross this too quickly. My attempts keep getting fucked over by some kind of unknown benefactor! What is causing that? I, I, I'm, I don't know what to do, chat. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I have an idea. When I get to the boardwalk, I'm gonna just stop and sit there for like, I don't know, 10 seconds. And maybe like trick the game into being like, Hey, don't trigger the pinecone audio. Just don't, please. Please and thank you. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna chill. I'm just gonna chill for a sec. I would love to just cross right now, finish this. Okay, What was that long enough? Okay, he heard me, but he didn't trigger a chase. So yeah, eventually I did end up getting the trophy, but I could not believe the amount of bullshit I had to deal with before that could happen. Um, oh, walk in that trap. <laughs> not me! Stay down! I was talking to him! <laughs> Who put that there? Huh? Thankfully, the vast majority of the other speedrun trophies gave me no grief, and I was able to first try most of them. What's also really interesting is that I never got that pinecone audio ever again on any of the other attempts. So I'm still not 100% sure what exactly was causing that. It just seemed so random. Eventually, I only had one speedrun trophy left, and it was in the final level of the game. But before that, I scooped up this last collectible for the trophy. This last speedrun proved to be the most difficult one by far. Because with this Death Angel encounter, it's easier than ever for something to go wrong. And before you know it, you're loading up an old save file to try again. I fully completed this route successfully three times. And don't even get me started on how many failed attempts I had. And even still, on my successful completions, the trophy would not pop. And so I had to keep loading different autosaves, trying again over and over, until finally I got a run that the game deemed worthy, and the trophy popped at long last. Fucking finally! It's also worth mentioning that on all three of my successful attempts, I was playing on hard, but I was starting to get really sick of having to do it on hard difficulty, so on the run where the trophy popped, I had actually lowered the difficulty down to easy. And I'm really unsure as to whether or not the trophy's glitched and will only pop on easy. That could be the case. But anyways, this was the last challenge in the game and it was now over. And with that, I was finally able to earn the platinum trophy in a quiet place. Is what I wish I could say. But no, I didn't actually platinum. But not for lack of trying. You see, at the time of making this video, the game is currently riddled with glitched trophies. I can't grab the very last collectible that I'm missing in the game because of this mysterious invisible wall, preventing access to the collectible. And in all my years of gaming, I've never seen anything like this. And no matter what I try, I just can't get past the barrier. 
Not only that, but there are four trophies associated with unlocking the in-game rewards in the shop. And despite me purchasing everything that was available, none of these trophies popped either. So unfortunately, I physically cannot platinum until the devs release a patch update fixing these issues. But I can assure you that there is no question that I am capable of earning the platinum in this game. And as soon as a patch comes out, I'll boot this game back up and pop the platinum within a matter of minutes. So hopefully you guys are understanding of this awkward situation. Trust me, putting out a video without a platinum popping doesn't sit right with me either. But unfortunately in this situation I don't have much of a choice. What am I gonna do, not release the content? Fuck no. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and if you guys enjoyed this video, consider checking out some more horror games that I've covered here on my channel before Spooky Month is over, and Happy Halloween!